Okay, my name is Tom Wong and I am with the CBE. Um, my role with, uh, is, uh, with dual credit is to supervise students in dual credit programming. So I liaise with um, the school, the post-secondary, the students and parents. And my job is to make sure everyone is successful in their learning. And today we have Michelle Cole from Bull Valley College. Michelle, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you, Tom. Hi, my name is Michelle Cole. I'm with Bow Valley College. I'm an Associate Dean in the School of Community Studies, and my portfolio is where the Justice Studies program sits. Uh, and so as students or um, organizations entering into dual credit, you won't necessarily be doing a lot of work with myself, but I uh, do work really closely with the program chair um, and as well as the faculty who do teach the courses. Michelle, can you see the lobby on your side? Can Are you able to let people yes, in? Yes, I can. I can let people in for you. No problem, yeah. Tom. So I can't see. <laughs> and uh, Michelle, I'll let you take over from here up until about slide 10, I believe. Uh, just, the presentation's not up, Tom. I don't know if you want to. It's just it's not, the screen. Yeah. What do you see? Just yourself and myself and the the bubbles of the other people attending on the screen. Okay. Stop sharing. Do you see the screen now? Okay, I am going to go slideshow. Do you see the screen still or no? <laughs> yes, yeah, you're okay. good. All right, so this slide just gives you um, a, the program description of the courses. Uh, or sorry, program description for the overall diploma program. And then dual credit is focusing on two particular courses that I'll talk about in just a moment. And so, um, oh, I went back a slide. Other slide? Yeah, perfect. So um, what we're focusing on in our Justice Studies program is work ready, um, work ready graduates to step into the justice field, which we'll, we'll look at later on different roles that you can take on. Um, our program focuses on looking at the criminal justice system, the involving issues in criminal justice, and the needs of diverse populations across different sectors. And so when you get into our program, you, you really look at justice from multiple viewpoints and that's why the two courses are offering in dual credit in the winter are really a good introduction into the justice sector here in Alberta. You can go to the next slide Tom. So what types of skills if you are interested in working in justice studies I know that you're just stepping into potentially taking two courses um, in the field but we have had students from uh, dual credit programs carry on into the justice studies program. Uh, we have currently have a few students in the program that started with dual credit and we also have graduates that are moving on to their careers. So these are just types of skills that those overall broad soft skills that we're looking for um, when you come into the program and then we'll help you further develop your skills as you get into the program. Uh, if you choose to carry on as well as um, just working in those two courses. I think double click Tom and it'll show the next. There we go. So in the program we have our um, if you click it two more times Tom it'll I don't know why the graphics. There we go. So in our program we have general justice studies. So the two dual credit courses you'll be taking are part of all three of our specializations and they're part of the first and second term of the program. And so they would count towards if you chose to come into the program later on. But just for your information, if you do carry on um, in the program, you can specialize in corrections, correctional studies as well, 
as law enforcement and or do our most popular track which is, which is general justice and the two courses we'll be looking at here in just a moment um, count in all three specializations next slide so the bundle that we're looking at through calgary board of education is offering our introduction to the criminal justice system and diversity and criminal justice in canada and so these two courses are, again, as I mentioned previously, two courses that are part of our first year of the program and really give you that first glimpse into the justice sector in, in um, not only Alberta, but really Canada as a whole. So the first course, Introduction to Ju um, the Justice System, examines the structure of the three different levels of government involved in the justice system as well as various legal agencies involved in the overarching philosophies that govern the legal system. And so you're really starting to dip a toe into what does the justice system mean? Um, and we're looking at youth justice all the way up, all the way up through our, our justice system. And then diversity in the criminal justice system in Canada. This is really diving into the eth ethics, racial and religious diversity across um, Canada in our policies, multiculturalism. Uh, we do place an em emphasis on Indigenous history and traditions within this course. But how does this all relate to policing corrections in our justice system, really, as well as looking at restorative justice? So other types of justice pathways or um, pathways people can take in the justice system or looking at um, restoring back faith into into the community as well as looking at um, when something has occurred uh, you know a criminal act has occurred is restorative justice a pathway versus um, detention or prison prison sentence one thing that we did last year with this course that went over really well is we had our main instructor Lori Bailey who is also our program chair um, and but then she what she had is she had other instructors come in and teach different modules of the course from different areas in the college, different programs, um, different areas within the justice system who are also casuals at the college to really dive into that diversity of not only the work that you can do in the justice system, but the diversity of the different people that are in the justice system. And that really. Um, the students really seem to like that. You know, they had Lori as their main instructor, but then they had that chance to see and hear from different college level instructors to not only hear their perspective of diversity and criminal justice, but also to the deep, different teaching methods that can happen when you jump into um, the college system. So this is just uh, kind of a, a, a graphic on the three the three pathways in our diploma program. Um, and from that, you graduate with a justice studies program specializing in general justice or corrections or law enforcement and moving into a various careers, which we show you on the next slide. Okay. So if this is, oh, That's me. oh, I thought it was on the next slide. Sorry, <laughs> that's fine. Um, just to highlight, so our program, we have students that go into police, directly into policing. Um, we actually have a few students, a few graduates right now who are um, going through the process to become Calgary, um, Calgary City Police. We have people who've gone into the RCMP. We also have correctional officers, peace officers, parole officers, um, general security. Uh, we have students who sometimes go and work in youth justice uh, or work in some of our youth serving organizations in Calgary, uh, Woods and Hall Homes, and they're working in different environments in there. So it's not just a uniformed position. You don't have to and graduate out and go into a position that, you know, like a policing or RCMP. There's the justice sector is really broad and there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, we have graduates working with Sutna police and they're not, they're, they're civil, civil members of that, that nation and that police force. And so they're doing different jobs within the force, but they're not necessarily officers. So there's just a really a lot you can do. Um, and these two courses will kind of give you a good um, spotlight into what the justice program is as well as what you could do afterwards.
Um, so on this slide here, these are the delivery dates. So we are following your um, semesters. Uh, so you'll come down to the campus Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. And we'll start in February and we'll wrap up at the end of May is, I believe, is the last date. I know last year was June 1st, but it's around that kind of last week of May. Mm -hmm. You weekly, you do, there's lots of readings, there's um, content that will be delivered every week. Uh, we'll bring in guest speakers, lots of engagement activities within the class, quizzes. Uh, there is midterm and final exam in both courses. Lots of different discussions as well as other assignments as well. Perfect, yeah. It, this is such an exciting course. Um, we had a cohort, we've had a number of cohorts, but I know last year's, I, I visited quite a bit. Um, I went into the class and I really enjoyed the collaboration that was going on there and the, the discussions about, and it's it's about what's happening in the world today, discussions, right? Mm -hmm. It's happening out there. And the kids are so, the students, shouldn't call them kids, but the students are so engaged in the conversation. And I, I often felt sad that I had to go lead because I had to go look after another program, but I really <laughs> sitting and just listening to the conversations that were happening in the, in the class. Um, so there, there is no cost to students. If you are a CBE student, um, your textbooks and your tuition are covered by the CBE. There's a cost to us, but not to you. Um, program benefits, you will earn high school credits as well as post-secondary credits. So not only are you getting credits at Bow Valley, but you're also getting 10 high school CTS credits at the same time. Uh, you get a jump start on a post-secondary education while you're still in high school. Um, I was just talking to some of the kids that were in the course last year, and I know two of them have returned to Bow Valley. They're, they've been accepted for next year, and they're, so they're, they're pretty excited that they got in, um, and they're pretty excited to start. Um, you build confidence through developing the learning strategies and skills that support your learning. You learn about ongoing opportunities and experience post-secondary learning. Um, again, uh, there's many opportunities that come from, from justice studies. I, I know one of the students from last year was also hired right away as a, a legal assistant at a law firm, and she's so excited. She's so She's so I'm so proud of her. <laughs> uh, you're taught by experienced instructors who are connected to industry and support students in making meaningful connections to career pathways. Um, Lori has a background in in, um, in justice. Uh, yeah, what I can. So Lori Bailey is our program chair, and she is from corrections, federal corrections. So she worked in federal corrections for over 23 years. Um, retired and moved on to post-secondary. So she is now our program chair or has been our program chair for, I shouldn't, uh, for five years and has been with the college for uh, longer than that. Um, and then we also have Ritu Mall, who is a criminologist and she is on, on our faculty. Uh, so her background is not even, not necessarily, as I mentioned earlier, in uniform. So that's not always a job you have to go to. So she is a criminologist, has worked with many different organizations um, across the Calgary area. We also have um, Kevin Charles, who is a retired, recently retired RCMP officer and worked primarily in recruitment the last few years, but he has joined us at the college, as well as uh, Mo Shakukat, and he is also from Federal Corrections and has moved over to teach at the college. And that's just our full-time continuous faculty. All our other casual faculty, so you, depending on who we who we bring on to teach these courses, you could meet um, people from that are currently working in justice as well, and they choose to come and teach casually as part of their extra job they do sometimes. Sometimes it's part of their work they have. Sometimes they they do this on the side. Um, they have different, but they all have different occupations. Some are still working directly with policing, RCMP, corrections, um, parole officers, correction, working in correctional facilities. So we have many different experienced casuals. So that's one big thing at Bow Valley College. Across the whole college, um, our faculty are often right from their careers, right from their sectors. They have direct experience. 
Um, they have that, what we call boots on the ground, recent examples to be able to kind of ignite your fire for the area you want to go into. Yeah. What I loved about um, the course also is those guest instructors, as you just mentioned, that would come in, they have real life experience and up to date experience. So they, it was authentic learning for, for students and it'll be authentic learning for students moving forward. To be eligible for a dual credit program, you have to ask yourself, am I a dedicated student? Uh, these courses have significant time requirements. So you have to remember, these are post-secondary courses. They are academically rigorous and you need to put the time in. So are you willing to put the time in? So what we ask for our, from our dual credit um, applicants are something called a personal learning schedule. What, when are you going to do the work? And when you submit your schedule, we, we hope you take it seriously. So you're going to follow that. Um, course, the classes are Tuesdays and Thursdays, but Monday and Wednesday doesn't mean it's a day off. It's a day to do the work of the course. Okay, so um, there's a lot, there's academic writing, there's academic reading and responses. So there's work to be done each week. Do you have a strong community? Do you have strong communication skills? There is an expectation that students enrolled in dual credit programming communicate with myself, your supervising teacher, as well as your instructor on a regular basis. So be proactive. It's harder for us to help you if you're if things have already happened and um, you need help, right? So be proactive if you know that there's something that's coming up and you you notify us then we can help you but if it's already it's like calling letting us know you're sick three days later it, it just doesn't work if you're not feeling well let us know the day of and we can work around it right so be proactive with your communication academic prerequisites it's open to all cbe high, high school students that are in grade 11 and 12. Um, you have a strong interest in exploring this pathway in justice studies or communication community relations um, we're committed to the duration of the semester so you're committed to tuesdays and thursdays being at bow valley from one o'clock to four o'clock you're going to be putting at least six to ten hours a week outside of class time for um, putting for readings exams tests um, and, and your writing piece. So give yourself that time. Again, when we ask for your personal learning schedule, we're, we're, we'd like to see where the six and 10 hours of study time will come from. Um, you are on track to be successful in passing ELA 20-1 or 20-2 with a minimum of 70%. Um, we ask uh, for 70% because there is a lot of academic reading in this in these programs okay social studies um, with a minimum of 70 percent we'd like you to be on track to finish 20-1 or 20-2 okay. how do i apply um, we have a qr code there on the side if you want to take a picture of it but uh, we have a website um, www.cve.ab.ca slash unique pathways um, another easy way that i tell students is Google CVE Unique Pathways and it's usually the first hit. Okay, then you're going to download the application um, from the website. You're going to connect with your parents and guardians to make sure this is the right time and fit for you at this time. And if your parents or guardians say yes, I think this is a good idea, you can now go to your off campus coordinator or your guidance counselor to make sure that the school feels it's the right fit for you as well and they can fit it into your timetable. Remember, you're going to need a block of time away from your home high school, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I would say, because Monday, Tuesday, you're going to be working whether you're at school or um, at home with um, the content of the course. OK, so it, they're not day offs. In your application, you're going to submit something called a so statement of support from a teacher. So 
pick a teacher that knows you well and how well and what you're learning or your learning styles, I guess, and you as a student. So they're going to speak to us about you as a student. We don't know you because I've never probably haven't met you before, right? So this is your opportunity to tell me who you are and why this is important to you. OK, so we'd like a statement of intent. Um, this is a big part of our decision making. Um, it's not solely on academic standing at your, your grades at school. We need to know why are you passionate about this? Why do you want to be in this program? Why does this fit with your career pathways? OK, so tell us about you. Um, last step is to make sure there's a checklist. You make sure that all the signatures are in place. You submit it to your off-campus coordinator or your guidance counselor by November 20th, and they will submit it to us. You do not submit directly to us. Um, so make sure that you are on or before November 20th, and that is coming up fairly quickly. Now we are ready for some questions. Um, I'm going to leave, leave this up here in case you want to pick up the QR code. I've just checked and there's no questions and oh, it looks like someone's writing a question right now in the chat. I'm going to turn off the recording and you can also feel free to end my computer stuff. I'm going to stop sharing. My computer is frozen. Do you have the questions in front of you? Uh, they're just, they're still typing, so. Okay. Oh. So wondering if this would be a good course to take if I want to eventually go into forensic science. Yeah, you know what I really, Andrea, um, I really think that it would be a good pathway for you. Um, and then even coming in and talking with our faculty and instructors um, would kind of give you a good sort of path to into forensic science and, and what do you what do you want to do? What are you hoping to get out of that pathway? But yeah, I really think it would be a good step into that because um, this is that's the base knowledge as you're heading into that area. So, yes, definitely. Sorry, Lori, my computer is frozen. It's not doing anything. <laughs> no problem. That was that was the only question so far. So um, you oh, can I think we have your, a your camera and ask a question, or you can ask a question on your mic if you'd like. Oh, I think this one's for you, Tom. Uh, when would you find out if you've been accepted for the program? Um, we will have our offers out. So what will happen is you're going to submit your application. You will receive a confirmation that we received your application. So um, if you don't receive an email by December 1st, it usually means we didn't get your application. Okay, so you, you will receive an, an email saying thank you for your application. And then we hope to have all of our decisions and our seats um, filled by the end before you go on break, if not the first week before you get back. Um, and then I think this next one is for me. So is this transferable to other post-secondary institutes? Uh, so Andrea, I'm going to say loosely yes. We do have transfer agreements in place with a few other post-secondaries where if students have a certain amount of courses they can transfer those into a degree at another at at another post-secondary however when you have post-secondary credit and you apply to another institute you can also then apply to the area in that that university for example to their transfer credit office and they will assess it or they will already have something in place that says yes we give transfer credit to bull valley's justice 1101 um and so i'm gonna that's why i said i'm gonna give you a loose yes as in it really depends on which post-secondary institute you go to but we do have some transfer agreements in place
there any other questions coming up? Uh, no, not at this time. We'll stay or I'll stay on and um, if you have any questions and we I'll stick around. Um, otherwise, this will be the end of our presentation. And thank you. Thank you. And I do look forward to your application. Yeah, we, we look forward to your applications. I don't see the applications. I just get to meet you on your first day um, and hope that we get to see all of you on your first day and, and hope that you choose Valley Dual Credit in the Justice Program.